In this video today I'll be showing you how I replaced the glass on, on the Apple Watch. This is the Series 3 42mm. Uh, the customer brought me this device and uh, the touch has gone out on the, the glass as, as it almost always does on the second and third series. And there you can see on the back 42mm Series 3. As you can see the touch doesn't work. I can't really turn it off so we'll have to disconnect the battery in order to fully turn it off. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully uh, slice through the, the old adhesive. I do this with a, a thin piece of plastic. It's rigid enough to, to act as, a, as like a razor blade but not as uh, dangerous as a razor blade. And then I actually use the adhesive that uh, uh, that comes to help separate it. It tends to pull the glass off for me. Sometimes when you mess with the screen, the, the device restarts, so that's what that was. But I'm just going to double check to make sure, now that I have the display disconnected, that it still works. We'll go ahead and disconnect the battery by removing the, the screw there and the shield that covers the battery connector. It just pries up and pulls out pretty easy. And if you don't have enough fingernail, you won't be able to get under the battery, so gently use some type of pry tool. If you're going to use metal, be sure you know what you're doing. This isn't a repair that is, is uh, simple. Next, I'm going to be peeling back the stickers that cover up the connectors, and I'm going to gently flip up each one of the tabs for the connectors. The next step is going to be removing all the connectors and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back the sticker here to allow me to have easier access to I'm going to wiggle each connector out of its uh, joint there. There's the screen all the way off. I'm going to tape up the majority of the screen just so I don't have the glass shards falling everywhere. Now we're going to take it over to our heat plate. We're going to suck it down so that it doesn't move. Carefully pry at the heat seek sticker that, that uh, goes across each one of these brackets. Carefully remove that. Next I'm going to pull up the, uh, the flex cable for the, uh, the touch screen or digitizer and get that kind of out of the way a little bit. Now each one of these screens is going to be different but I have a, a point of entry where I can insert my wire on the top side there. I'm going to slowly work the wire around. Now mind you this is this whole video is, is in fast forward basically so it's going to take much longer than this to uh, remove the glass. I'm doing this at a very uh, fast paced in the video but you'll gently be able to make your way across here my uh, suction started to give out so it's going to be a little tricky I get it, I get it eventually alright there we go next we're going to take and uh, pull off all of the adhesive so I do this by rubbing uh, my finger on the adhesive as you may have seen me do in my other videos on the Apple Watch series uh, 1, series 2, um, and, and series 3 as well. This does take some time but I found this to be the easiest method for me to remove the adhesive uh, because uh, it's uh, 
pretty tacky stuff, but it does roll off with patience. You can flex the display a little bit, but don't push too hard because it is fragile in it, and you may end up damaging it if you if you flex it too much. Almost cut all the adhesive off. After this step, we will then go toward cleaning the display and testing it to make sure that throughout this whole process we haven't done any damage to it. There we go. We'll just go straight to connecting it. Now as you've probably seen in some of my other videos, I really don't like these connectors because they have such a tight tolerance. Um, they're a little tricky to, to work back in, especially when you don't have the, the rigid glass on the display. You have to work with the display without damaging it. It's a little tricky. Go ahead and get that connected up. Reconnect the battery and I'll try turning it on. There it goes. We'll go ahead and clean the display off a little bit there. I love the look of the uh, of the water and the fire. There we go. I just zoom in just so you can see that it's still working. There's the fire. Beautiful. Love it. One more time. All right. We'll go ahead and disconnect the battery again and disconnect the uh, the display. We're going to move on towards uh, installing the new digitizer on this display. So I'm going to make sure it is clean. There you go again, series 3, 42 mil. We'll elevate the display on this little stand that I've made that you will have seen me made in another video. And then I'm just going to be meticulous in cleaning off the display to make sure that there's no dust and, or other residue that's going to end up between the, the, uh, the display and the glass. Now we're going to apply some of the loca that we have. I'm just going to put a little dollop there. There's a little dust speck that got in there so I'm going to remove it. Take our new digitizer, peel off the protector that's in the inside and carefully set it on. Now if you go too fast, you may end up getting a bubble like I do here. So I'm going to lift it back off. There you can see the little bubble. I'm going to pop it out. A couple of the little micro bubbles that were in there, I'm just going to pull them out. And then I'm going to go ahead and just let that re-adhere to itself and become bubble free. We'll let na gravity naturally pull the... Uh, adhesive to all the corners and then I'm going to use my microscope and line up all the corners and flash it with my UV light and when I'm satisfied with uh, its alignment I'm going to hit it really hard with UV light both on the front and the back for quite some time just to make sure that this is uh, solidified go ahead and protect the front and um, we're going to go ahead and put the connector temporarily down. I'm going to later adhere it with adhesive that I think I do off camera. But uh, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, check uh, and see if the, the touch is now working. We'll go ahead and we'll connect the connectors again. Gently placing the, uh, the connectors in each one of their spots. Mm -hmm. 
The center one's giving me a little bit of trouble, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the third one and uh, get it secured so that I can keep going on the middle one for the, for the touch. Reconnect the battery and power it on. There we go, series 342 now. All right, that's kind of fast. If you like what you've seen so far, feel free to subscribe and leave a comment below if you'd like to see a video of something that, uh, that isn't out there or something you'd like to see me do. But here you go, here you see that the, uh, the display is still working. We'll go ahead and we'll test the touch now in a second. Beautiful display, love it. I'm testing the touch. And there it is. Customer said they had this uh, sitting around on their shelf for many, many months because the touch hadn't worked and they weren't sure if they wanted to get it fixed. But it ended up being a lot less to, to get it fixed. And, buy them a new one. There's the beautiful fire display. I really enjoyed doing this video. If you've enjoyed it as well, feel free to like the video and to uh, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. I'll go ahead and turn it off and I'll read here the, uh, the screen after uh, putting the, everything back together. Here it is all put back together. I've called the customer and he's going to come and pick it up shortly. He'll be excited to have his watch working again without uh, being cracked and without being able to use a touch. on this display. I love it with the water and the fire. And finally, thanks for watching.